Sobat Interest bersama saya Rian Kaputra telah hadir narasumber Executive Director World Bank Group of South East Asia Bapak Wempi Saputra. Apa kabar Pak Wempi? Baik, Mas Rangka, terima kasih atas undangannya. So far so good. Welcome back home to Indonesia. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Bagaimana rasanya bisa tetap kembali ke Indonesia di tengah kesibukan di Boston? Selalu merasa apa ya kangen dengan situasi Indonesia. Kagum juga dengan berbagai perkembangan. Dan kadang-kadang kita dari jauh melihat wah ini saya pingin selalu ada attachment untuk dapat cerita di Indonesia juga membagi cerita yang dari dari DC ke sini. Oke, okay. baik Pak Wempi, kita akan berbicara, berdiskusi santai mengenai okay. ASEAN Treasury Forum 2024. Oke. Okay. Dan please let me lead this interview in English. The first question, from the World Bank's perspective, how strategic is ASEAN in terms of its economic and developmental significance among other countries in the region? Thank you. Actually, let me start by uh, highlighting that ASEAN is among the brightest spots in the world in terms of economic growth, in terms of the investment, in terms of human capital uh, development. So ASEAN is very much important for the world as well as from the World Bank perspectives. In this case, we are very much focusing on the World Bank investment in ASEAN and the lending, corporations, knowledge part, as well as try to expedite the regional economic development. World Bank sees ASEAN as part of the, the knowledge agenda, agenda as well as uh, focus on how to expedite some of the best practices of regional economic development of the ASEAN to be replicable to other countries. So it's very much significant for the World Bank uh, in terms of the cooperation with ASEAN. So is it about the uh, sustainable development goals in terms of the sustainable development goals, ASEAN, uh, I think, has been championing, uh, like the how to reduce the poverty. Uh, they, they, they are uh, very much uh, contributing to end the extreme poverty in ASEAN and boosting shared prosperity. And at the same time, ASEAN also contributing to trade uh, liberalizations, mm. investment promotions, and even the energy transition uh, conversation right now in the global context, ASEAN is among the, the, the champions uh, as part of the uh, uh, regions to become a pioneer of this movement. So SDGs is uh, very much related to ASEAN development. And uh, in this case, of course, we understand so many, uh, so many challenges along the way. And not, so, not all SDGs target are being you know, met so far. But ASEAN as a region has been contributing uh, significantly to, to the achievement of sustainable development goals. Okay, Pak Wempi, so what future directions do you see for public financial management or PFM reforms mm -hmm. in some ASEAN countries? It's very, very fundamental questions. Uh, uh, PFM is being acknowledged uh, 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 in terms of fostering transparency, uh, fostering the, the, the accountability, as well as uh, especially about governance. And also PFM is being acknowledged to create a more value added. Mm. So this PFM program is not only to uh, enhance, to uh, what you call it, uh, develop a more capacity of the country, especially on the treasury and uh, financial management perspective, but also to increase the capacity of the governance system. As you know, once the governance system is be being established inside the country, so there is an increase of the trust of other countries from the investors, from the multilateral development banks, and all international stakeholders. Mm. So PFM is a core uh, of the program that create this kind of value edit, uh, not only about the governance, transparency, and also accountability, but also might create on a, uh, some value edit to expedite uh, the other program inside the government. PFM is the core. So what the strengths and the challenges of those PFM reforms? Yeah. PFM reforms uh, facing challenges, I think, uh, based on uh, not only about regulations, because in terms of transparency, governance, and other things, we should uh, develop our own regulations uh, capability. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, not an easy task in some countries. The second, about aligning with domestic party agendas, because in many countries, uh, they are talking about how to sustain, establish the accountability framework of the PFM, but at the same time, they're also creating uh, the capacity to increase 
the 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 the, the openness of the transaction and the financial transaction and other things. So part of this uh, capacity also become a concern uh, between countries. And the third one I would like to highlight about how to operationalize uh, with domestic the priorities in this case and how to see the system, not only about the information system, uh, digital or maybe uh, information system capability, but also how to operationalize throughout the country. A country like Indonesia, which is uh, very much big inside the ASEAN, I think 40% of the population of ASEAN mm -hmm. context. So once the project uh, of PFM uh, quite successfully implemented in Indonesia, it is much more easy to be replicated to other countries. So in this case, I think this kind of the regulation constraint, aligning with domestic quality agendas, some of the capacity, how to operationalize the PFM measure, I think become much more uh, significant to be to be resolved from Indonesia to replicate to others. Okay, so uh, how can the World Bank continue to support those reforms? There are a couple a couple uh, cooperations between the World Bank and the current countries. The first, they are, they, they they can provide uh, that lending and operations. Mm -hmm. So seeing that the the domestic agendas, uh, domestic uh, development plan, part of this uh, the World Bank uh, World Bank priorities. The second, uh, in terms of the knowledge, so this is very much focusing on capacity building, uh, technical assistance, providing also analyticals and uh, analytical tools and maybe relevant research. So uh, this kind of cooperation, I think, uh, already already involving in many kind countries. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, also actually, what we also learn from, from Indonesia, from other countries who are implementing this PFM program so that they can understand uh, not only showcasing the, the very specific focus and understanding uh, what is the, the main constraint on the implementation side or maybe on the planning side, and at the same time also to improve the, pro uh, to improve the program for the future cooperation. So, so lending, operations, uh, knowledge in terms of capacity building, technical assistance, and also analytical. Okay, yeah. we're going to talk about ASEAN Trust Reform. Mm -hmm. Uh, how can the establishment of the ASEAN Treasury Forum mm -hmm. align with and support mm -hmm. the strategic objectives of ASEAN Economic? Oh, this is a very good question. Right? Mm. <laughs> uh, if we see ASEAN, uh, because ASEAN is very stable in terms of the regional cooperations, and ASEAN also uh, uh, very much open to the global economy, and ASEAN is to be seen part of the, the brightest spot for uh, investment and uh, economic growth. So PFM become a big bone to because we are now uh, uh, very much, uh, what you call it, um, familiar with cross-border transactions, mm -hmm. uh, cross-border payments, and some of the maybe system, you, you, you may call it curious and other things. Okay. Uh, and you visit uh, like uh, Vietnam or maybe Thailand, they are very much developed on this kind of payment system. So this PFM, uh, Mas Lanka, is part of the big bone to, uh, to uh, what you call it, not only enhancing the, the smoothness, the accountability of the payment system, but also creating the value added and the governance system inside the country. So uh, this value added, I think, uh, part of the significant contribution of PFM to the, to the ASEAN region. And it seems that PFM could become also uh, enhanced to, to enhance, like uh, not only uh, on regional cooperation wise, but also a showcase from regional to the, to the global context. In India also, they have the, the domestic uh, payment system called UPI. Mm. But now, because it is very big, but ASEAN with I think around 600 million populations exactly. is very good showcase and good example for how to integrate the public financial management and ASEAN Treasury Forum. You mentioned before about this uh, part of the value added uh, inside the regions. So it will benefit a lot for ASEAN member countries, right? Very much, very much benefit to, to ASEAN member countries in this case, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. The next question, the World Bank has supported the ASEAN Treasury Forum launching at oh. first meeting through the same public right. financial man management multi donor trust fund or PFM MDTF3. Okay. Yeah. okay, now in what terms do you think ASEAN Treasury Forum matters to the World Bank's interest? Uh, actually, uh, when I see this uh, uh, ASEAN Treasury Forum, actually, I think thanks to the uh, Mr. DG who initiated this in a conversation and also part of the, I think, uh, part of the, uh, not only the sideline of the ASEAN meeting, also we now become the core conversation inside the ASEAN. 
So the world bank said that the knowledge of this uh, ASEAN Tertiary Forum is very beneficial to the member states. Not only that, actually ASEAN Tertiary Forum become a new bonding, what you call it, activities inside the ASEAN. So some people would see uh, uh, the development of ASEAN Tertiary Forum by uh, transferring the knowledge and exchange ideas. Mm. Uh, transferring the knowledge to understand the other system inside the regions and how to smooth this kind of transactions to develop to develop maybe uh, maybe what you call it not only trade uh, cooperation maybe investment cooperation but also creating new governance on the regional basis i think this is the new uh, the new breakthrough of this asean okay. asean tertiary forum and it seems the law bank needs very much this kind of the uh, uh, what you call it approach so that uh, because World Bank actually at, at one side, World Bank would like to have uh, to create a global governance inside the regions. And at the same time also expediting the economic development in terms of sustainability. So our central showroom become, uh, I think, a very good example uh, as a main driver about the regional basis uh, corporations to create the value and also to enhance, enhance cooperation, especially on the economic side. To be the driver, that's very generous of you, sir. Thank you very much. So, what are the expected outcomes of the meeting that will be beneficial for for the forum and the bank? I might suggest uh, three things. The ASEAN Treasury Forum, not only uh, as I mentioned before, uh, sharing the knowledge of part of these corporations, how to create value, to sustain the governance to enhance the accountability. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very important for, for cooperation between the World Bank and the client countries. The second, we can see the showcase of ASEAN Treasury Forum to support the economic, economic development inside the country and also for the regions. As you know, uh, uh, trade liberalization, investment promotion, and other financial cooperation inside the regions I think very much benefited from the ASEAN Treasury Forum. And I think this kind of knowledge exchange and ideas and other things, uh, some of the continuous improvement program, I think should be become a daily conversation for the Treasury experts in ASEAN. The third one, I, I would say that uh, please also include some of the this knowledge, not only for the, uh, the governmental agencies, but also the private sector, so that they can learn. Uh, uh, the breakthrough of the government, reforms of the government, they can also improve the, the, the cooperation between uh, the private sector and the public sector. As, as you know, uh, Masriyanka, in ASEAN, we have so many youth, young people. We have to prepare them for the future. So please also invite them as part of this ASEAN Treasury Forum so that they can understand their future, they can contribute for the best of the, their future uh, by using this system. That's my suggestion. I underline some words like ATF is a breakthrough and then uh, connect all the members of the ASEAN. So as the ASEAN chairman in 2023 and ASEAN uh, Treasury Forum chairman for 2024-2025, mm -hmm. what should be Indonesia's priority? That's a very difficult question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should not ask me. You should ask pa, Ibu Menteri or Pak DG. Yeah, but, but let me share with you uh, maybe two things from my side. As, uh, as uh, Using my, the first hat as the, the, the representative of the government, okay. but also maybe the second hat uh, to represent the World Bank uh, board members two to different the things. countries. Yeah? So uh, in the World Bank, we see that uh, the questions of uh, multilateral cooperation mm -hmm. is very much uh, important, not only for the regions, but also the global context. Because uh, we have only one Earth, one planet, we have to ensure this livable planet could be uh, prospered and also benefit to all. So this, uh, as a, an ASEAN chairmanship, I think uh, uh, I would like to highlight two things. The regional economic development should should sustain multilateral cooperations, enhance the the, the regional uh, economic development and in the region, and to the benefit of the world. Why this is important, Masriyaka? Because we are now facing so many global challenges. You mentioned about climate change, a pandemic, fragility, food security, water access, energy, and other things. So we cannot do alone for this. So as a chairman of the ASEAN uh, in 2024, perhaps, uh, please, uh, uh, the chairmanship might consider 
this kind of the multilateral cooperation, how to collectively tackle the global challenges, how to collectively foster the regional economic development, how to collectively sustain uh, what you call it the peace in the world. I think this is the first part because we, we need the sounding board from developing countries. The second thing I would like to highlight about uh, how we uh, as an ASEAN to be seen as a global context. As you know, now the problem of legitimacy of geopolitical issues, so many tension in the world, and they see ASEAN very much you know, peaceful. <laughs> uh, in the World Bank, we divide the regions in the world into six parts. Mm -hmm. It's Asia Pacific, Latin American, Caribbean, uh, Middle East and North Africa, uh, European and Central Asia, and two African regions. Unfortunately, Masinaka, there are in each region there is conflict. Mm. In East Asia Pacific, we have Myanmar. In Latin American Caribbean, we have Haiti. In Middle East and North Africa, we have Gaza. In European Central Asia, we have Ukraine, and at least six military coups, domestic conflict in Sub-Saharan Africa. So the message of how to sustain the global leadership, how to tackle or mitigate the geopolitical tensions between countries, and how to foster prosperity for all is the main issue ASEAN should, should give the, the voice to the world. And inviting the world to invest more in ASEAN because it's the brightest spot potency uh, as an, an, an engine of economic growth inside the region. So these two messages perhaps maybe for, for the consideration of the challenge for 2024. So to tackle the global challenges, how, to, how important cooperation between Asian member countries uh, to enhance capacity in the uh, cooperation, or I, I mean to for the uh, treasury and PFM sectors, I mean. It's very specific question, by the way. Let's say uh, we would like to tackle about the issue of food insecurity. Food insecurity. Food insecurity. Uh, you know, uh, uh, at least now, 700 million people under extreme poverty, meaning that living below $2.15 per head per day to 700 million people. Mm -hmm. So how to tackle this food security in ASEAN? ASEAN still have around 2.2% around uh, extreme poverty on, of 600 million people. So quite large. Mm -hmm. So with PFM and have you, you can enhance the cooperation between ASEAN to increase the focus of the spending. So they're talking about the quality of spending mm -hmm. to tackle the extreme poverty inside the ASEAN regions. How to create also the governance system when we are tackling the food security insecurity problem inside the inside the, inside the regions, how to also enhance the cooperation? If we already tackle the you know extreme poverty in one country, how about we help another country? So what is the best practices inside the other country so that we can learn together and we can apply to other countries? So the ASEAN Treasury Forum, I think, might create an exchange of ideas and also maybe creating a more cooperation between ASEAN member states so that they can learn each other, exchange ideas, and even maybe giving some technical assistance so that we can tackle the same problem inside the regions. We are focusing on food, in, food insecurity. So this is one of the example the ASEAN Tertiary might might create value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, what are the possible future cooperations between the ASEAN Treasury Forum and World Bank, of course, in terms of building capacity of PFM and Treasury official in ASEAN member yeah. countries? I will. I would suggest three things because ASEAN Treasury Forum with the PFM MDTF program, I think, uh, considered very much successful so far. First, uh, using the success story uh, so that uh, many countries can replicate. So you're creating the knowledge. So meaning that the knowledge cooperation between the ASEAN and the World Bank. The second, enhance the participation of many, many, many uh, advanced countries. And of course, the middle income countries. Actually, uh, right now, uh, we are not talking about only giving the, the money, but also cooperations. Yeah. So I, I, I often give some example by using my hand. ASEAN uh, should uh, not only a mentality of receiving but now, you have to be cooperating. Mm -hmm. Why? They bring the money, you bring the knowledge. They bring the technology, 
you bring the commitment. So the sign of cooperation uh, with the base of ASEAN Terrestrial Forum is very much important for the regions and also for the international stakeholders. So you can invite the, the international stakeholders, not only from the advanced economies, but also from uh, uh, middle income countries, so for the, from the MDs. And the third one I would like to suggest that these ASEAN Terrestrial Forum or also uh, could think about the integrations. So we are talking about the integrated information system or integrated ASEAN Terrestrial Forum. Because uh, now uh, the financial sector is very much connected. So we would like to have a more, uh, not a information asymmetry between ASEAN member states about the ASEAN Terrestrial Forum. So I think it's a good idea also to develop uh, an ASEAN uh, system of the ASEAN Terrestrial Forum with the integrated information system so that everybody can access, can understand, can distribute and communicate uh, timely and also in the accountable manner. So this kind of the suggestion. Okay, the last one. Could you please give some uh, words for the ASEAN Treasury Forum that will be held in October? Oh, this year. Okay. I would suggest uh, for ASEAN Treasury Forum, uh, keep improving the system, enhancing the accountability, transparency uh, among, among, among the ASEAN member states, and learn each other how to improve the system to be replicable to other countries. Please share the success story, not only to our ASEAN member states, but also to the world. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for joining with us. Bapak WMP Saputra, sekali lagi, Thank terima you. kasih telah bergabung bersama Thank kami. Thank you for the invitation. Dan itu tadi Sobat Interest, wawancara saya Rian Kaputra bersama Executive Director World Bank Group of Southeast Asia, Bapak WMP Saputra. Sampai jumpa.